London, capital city of the UK and home of the 2012 Olympic Games. This is Building the Olympics. Once in London, visitors are expected to take time to enjoy tourist destinations such as Trafalgar Square, the London Eye, the Houses of Parliament, Tower Bridge, and iconic skyscrapers such as the Gherkin and the all-new Super Tower The Shard. By the time the London 2012 Olympic Games begin in late July, a workforce of around 100,000 people will have already been hard at work getting the Olympic Park and other venues ready to play host to elite athletes and excited spectators from around the world. Once those athletes and spectators arrive, a veritable army of up to 70,000 volunteers will be on hand to ensure the smooth operation of the Games alongside a substantial security operation of 10,000 guards, as well as 30 sniffer dogs. But it doesn't just stop with the numbers. The security will be backed up with hardware, as HMS Ocean is to be stationed in the River Thames for the duration of the Games. Around 30.7 million people are expected to visit as a result of the Games, and they are estimated to pump a massive £17.6 billion into the UK's economy, providing a substantial boost to British businesses, small and large alike. But with so many people, how will transport be handled? Organisers are aiming for 100% of spectators to be carried by public transport, cycling and walking. For COVID demand, London Overground and Docklands Light Railway have even extended platforms, increasing capacity. There is also a high-speed javelin rail link from Kent to London St Pancras International, providing direct, fast travel. With 10 different rail routes into Stratford, it is one of the best connected parts of London and should be easily accessible from throughout the UK without substantial disruption for most travellers. Finally, with Danny Boyle on the organising committee for the opening ceremony, the start of the Olympic Games is expected to be one of the greatest shows of all time.